G'day, fellas, and welcome to game number four, week three of Outback Octagon 2. A lot of numbers in there for you, and we got even more players because Sporting in on the north side of the map playing. As the Malians, we've got Casper just below him in pink, playing as the English. It's Matiz over towards the east side of the map, playing in the color red as the Holy Roman Empire. It's Sass just below him on the yellow. Playing as the Mongols. We'll come back to him. We'll come back to him. We, we'll come back. We'll, we've got to come back. We, we, he's got to be the last one. He's got to be the last one. All right. Below him. Below him. Playing in the color blue. As the Holy Roman Empire. It's Vortex. On the west corner of the map. With arguably the best spawner there is. On the Chinese. It's Divine DFP. Now, I don't know if we've caught everybody. How many have we got? One, two, three, four, five. That's six. Hello, hello. What do we got here? A little bit of blade. Five, 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 five action. He's actually going to be throwing down a town center right next to Matiz. And Matiz is well and truly ahead. So Blade, who spawns in as the teal, he's got a bit of a tough spot ahead of him. But ladies and gentlemen, he cancels the TC. Definitely a wise decision here. Hopefully he puts it down on the bottom side. Indeed he does. Much smarter decision there from Blade. But ladies and gentlemen, on the east side of the map, playing as the Mongols, in the color yellow, as all good snakes are, it is the one, it is the only, it is the Viper! Actually, it's it's uh, it's it's not the Viper. It's it's off-brand Viper. This isn't the real Viper. Um, this is Viper stand-in. So, unfortunately, Viper not available today. Uh, and so this is, uh, this is Viper, uh, this is Viper Light. Now, in addition to me casting this game, we've also got the, the, the lovely Winston Waffles. How you doing, Winston? I'll take that. I'm doing great, man. I'm doing great. Last game we just cast was a blast. This one already shaping up to be an amazing game. I mean, this map layout is insane and the players are so spread out. We got a bit of a cluster here on the right side near orange, red, and yellow, right? They have some some messy interactions there for sure but some isolated players with a lot of space to work with we could be seeing a long game here for sure yeah i wouldn't be surprised especially when you look at the spawn that casper's got take a look at this one of the best spawns i think i've ever seen in a free-for-all playing the marlians large gold veins absolutely everywhere they're free they're open he's going to be able to really use that gold and start rolling in those uh, that, that passive gold income. So I expect Matiz might be in a little bit of trouble early on if he's not able to deal with uh, with Casper, especially because that's quite a good matchup for the Malians as well. Yeah, there's some really spicy matchups in this as well. Like like, like you just said, notably, I, I think I think an important thing to point out is we have the HREs kind of squaring off against... Oh, wait, no, not, not the HREs. That was just immediately wrong. I clicked on the wrong sim. My bad. We got H versus French in the center here. <laughs> Whoops. Um, and ah, man, what going on? I'm just trying to parse it all, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, th there's so much going on. I think I missed introducing Core. Uh, so I, I guess it's time <laughs> for uh, for me to introduce Core. Uh, th that wasn't intentional. Now, often we do make fun of Core. We often, you know, if, if I'll be honest, if I went to the same school as Core and I was picking an Age of Empires team, Core. Um, he, you know, what? I'm not going to finish that sentence. I'm going to let the imaginations of all players far and wide, uh, work that one out. Ladies and gentlemen, playing the French in the middle of the map in the, uh, in the color orange. It is of course core. All right. Yeah. I mean, I, th I think this map design is, is, is crazy and I love it. Right. Because to me, it, it, it's almost like we're playing... The map is square, but I feel like we're kind of playing a bit of a rectangle map. And let me explain what I mean by that. It, it feels very linear in the way that this map may play out. In that Kasva, he's going to start by rolling his forces over Matiz. Then he's going to try and roll them over the top of Sass. And eventually make his way around the map. And by the same token, I would expect Divine to be doing that same thing. Uh, so it, it's very much like you're, you're quite safe if you're in these corners. That said, notice next to the Vines Town Center, I think there's a land bridge. I think that's a viable crossing spot. Oh and my god. I, I think I think that kind of makes it interesting, although I think in general you're completely right. I think that is how the game is gonna play out. 
But, I mean, this could be a little sneak location here. Like, it, it could be tricky to defend that. I mean, I'm, I'm assuming if it is crossable, Divine's going to try and protect both sides of it. Um, which means his base is going to be kind of interesting. It's going to look more like a Mediterranean map, like Baltic, right? Where you just kind of have a ring of players around the sea. But the sea is definitely one-sided, right? Like, only a couple players have, like, great access to it long-term. Yeah, yeah, I got to agree with you. I, I didn't realize that there was a land bridge right there. That, that's actually awesome, and that really changes the way that this map will play because it means that there's a lot more flexibility here for Divine to move over towards Casper's side and, and vice versa as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, taking a look at these early spawns, though, one of the things to note is that there's not a lot of gold right now for our off-brand Viper. Now, I'm not going to be revealing exactly who that is. Uh, I, I, look, I, I can tell you right now that they're... They're, they're an AoE2 player. I can, I can say that much. They've played some AoE2 in their time, uh, I guess you could say. So I might leave it at that, but uh, they are ve very, very familiar with Age of Empires 4. Uh, unfortunately, just that gold is so far away. Look at that. Three villagers now coming out for off-brand Viper here. That looks like he's going to have to go way up there, which is tricky. It looks like he was trying to contest, but Vortex just already had a tower on that gold. Akin going down as well, so he's going to he's gonna control this large gold vein for the time being. Um, interesting to see how that little matchup is going to play out. I, I can only imagine that off-brand Viper is going to have some problems with Vortex here in the future. But Vortex, yeah. though, notably, no relics. Oh, no, no, no. I think he's, he has one. He's one got next the to one. Arcan. Yeah, one next to the Arkan. That's it. Uh, the next closest is going to be all the way over to the west side, and uh, Blade will be camping that one, I'm sure. Uh, but, uh, yeah, interestingly, above him is Sass, and Sass has got no relics near him at all. There's four relics at the top of the map, and uh, interestingly, I don't see many other relics. I mean, there's just that one, so th there's five, and then I see the sixth relic down the bottom. Uh, do you see anything more than the six relics, or is am I crazy? I'm, I'm scouring. I I'm looking, you know? I got my eye my spyglass in, and I I'm trying to find it, but I, uh, I don't see any. I think it's just a low relic spawn. And that's going to be rough for those HRE rolls because, I mean, HRE is a great sieve, but, I mean, they're a fantastic sieve when you get, you know, three or four relics with the regments, right? And not having that means you kind of have to rely on other means to support yourself, and that can be tricky for HRE. They don't have a lot of bonuses outside of that um, for economy, right? Yeah. Yeah. But we'll see how they make it work. It's it's going to be tough for these HRE players. Definitely, Casper will be happy with all those relics up towards that top position. But I'm curious to see how this game plays out. We do see that Matt is, uh, is now looking to drop down a barracks towards that north side of his base. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see some aggression getting put out here early by him. Yeah, if he could squish Casper early, punish him, kill him fast, he would have so much space to himself. So it might be a good play for him, him to look northwards, but already sassy and core fighting over what seems to be the only two gold mines in the entire central position on this map you have to go so far if you are sassy right you have to go all the way to the all the way to the east corner maybe share gold with with uh, off-brand viper that, that could be the play yeah but i don't think i don't think they're gonna let that happen yeah we can see that off-brand viper has already got the outpost on the gold so now sass is gonna have to head on out away from that position I'm not sure whether he scouted out that, that gold all the way on the east side, but he's definitely having a bit of a tough time here. Uh, and yeah, unfortunate for him, just simply because the two outposts that have come up from core are enough to d deny both of the golds, whereas his outposts, they secure one gold, but they don't prevent the denial of that gold, though. So it's uh, definitely a bit of an awkward spot. No, for sure. And yeah, now he's going way out there, like he said, and... Oh, this is just getting so tricky for Sassy, right? Like, if you have your economy this spread out, and you built this Aachen with nothing, like, what? what's he going to do mid-game? This is going to be really tricky. He could just get squished, but, I mean, if he's lucky, Matisse and uh, and Castle just kind of get embroiled into a battle amongst themselves as we see Matisse moving out with a little squadron. Damage to be done. Castle's woodline's really exposed, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it's definitely one of those things where uh, where he's going to have to come through from the front side and there's there's nothing on the back when it comes to wood. So he could be looking... I, he, I'm curious about whether he goes for a castle edge here, but the resources in the bank are quite low. He's got the cows underneath, but the men at arms together. Uh, and we do see an age up is now coming through for Vortex. This is a very quick age up. 
Of course, it's going to be the Regnets because the Cathedral, so no surprise there. But take a look at this. Casper under pressure on this north side of the map. No units out for him at the moment. Was going for a second pit mine. Not going to be able to find it. Three villagers being lost out for him. Matt is putting on the early pressure. How the lime green suits littering the floor as they <laughs> as they ran from that wood line. They didn't make it home though. Man, that's that's really, really tough for Castle because his position is so good if he could solidify it, but Matisse, smart read here, getting some damage in early, looking to put on some pressure with an outpost as well. And I think this just goes back to the way that Matt is spawned in. He was the first one to place the town center down, and he stuck it, he committed to it, and that's just really solidified this position in early feudal because it feels like you know wh where are casper's units and the answer is well he's just so far behind everybody else uh because it took him a little bit of time to get him to position indeed and i just checked it looks like vortex does know where the second relic is we'll see if he sends a guy out to grab that like we talked about earlier, that's really important for these early FCs with, with HRE. Yeah, yeah, th this is one of the key factors. Yeah, and it looks like the Prelate is heading out there. So not only does he know, but he is on the move towards it. So it's going to be two relics in the bag for him. And he's heading into Knights already. So I'm expecting that he's probably going to be looking to try and take out his immediate neighbor, off-brand Viper, as soon as he can. Uh, he's also got a couple of spears coming out, though, off-brand Viper. So it looks like he's up to four spears for the moment. And we do see multiple outposts coming up for Sass on this northern position. Very fearful of an attack. Yeah, and in the meantime, Castle feeling so much pressure right now. He doesn't really have any resources to work except for the gold. Things looking really awkward for him. Can't even afford a market to help, like, smooth out his economy. But, you know, something else we haven't really talked about, Drongo, is the water. I mean, it, we looked at it early, but... There's only five players on it, and they are mega fish boomed right now. Yeah. They are just, they have a piece of cord. They say, okay, we're going to be the five players late game, right? Because it's such a big advantage to have this many deep fish working. If you're one of the players without water, you have to start eliminating players ASAP. Otherwise, they're just going to get outscaled, right? Matisse is putting on so much pressure on Caspa, who doesn't have a dock. And so behind this, Matisse's economy is just... Like, it's actually insane. <laughs> it's going so crazy. But we do see Casper is aging up, though. He's going towards that castle age. He's put the Faruma garrison on a bit of an interesting side of his base. Uh, I'm curious why he went for it on the south side where the enemy army is. So this is going to be delayed pretty heavily here. And we can see Matiz is rallying even more. Un oh, my God. There's so many units coming through for Matiz here. So I, I think Matiz, uh, his, his numbers are looking incredible. I'm curious if he's, got, if he's picked up siege engineering, though. We'll take a look and see. He has. So he's got siege engineering through. Plus one range attack. He's looking for the ranged armor now. Really good spot for him. Yeah, Kasva gonna try and use this little gold bank he has. He has 500 gold in the bank. That's about two clicks at the Farimba if you pick the cheaper options, which, which means you'll have 10 units to defend. But I mean, there's 20 units on the door and rams are coming down. I I don't really see it. I mean, me, me, the Farimba is really strong, right? Yeah. But the gold is getting pressured and the economy for Matisse is so much better. So he moves into Javelin Throwers, which is definitely the right call. Needs to throw down an archery range and get out the uh, veterancy on the Javelin Throwers. The problem that he's going to have is he's got no wood. There's no wood whatsoever behind him. Um, and his houses are under pressure as well. So he's going to be losing out on that. Oh, man. And in the meantime, Budget Viper getting, getting pressured by Vortex. These knights doing a lot of damage to the economy. Only a couple spearmen left to defend. And bills are going to be going down. Yeah, he, he was looking to try and, and hit a castle age, but he's run out of food. We can see right now, Walmart Viper trying his best to keep the villagers alive. But unfortunately, it is just a complete surround from all these knights. And a very quick kill, it looks like, from Vortex. Felt like Discount Viper was already rude. She just called him Walmart Viper. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's cold-blooded, man. That is, that is cold-blooded. It, it, we, we've got, uh, it, it's off-brand Viper, Walmart Viper, uh, the Viper at home, um, small, sna small snake, small, sm small snake, big tongue. Uh, there's, there's lots of names what? for this individual. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> I'll leave it at that one. You can, you can enjoy the big tongue over there. So let's see, we got a lot of rams from Matisse now. The pressure is mounting, and I think he's going to go in on four, and looks like that's the play. 
He's got javelins oh, out to the back, and they do have their veterancy. I don't know. Oh, oh, you, never mind. He just got the veterancy upgrade from the Farimba Garrison. Of course, you can do that. Uh, it's a little bit le less efficient to do it, but uh, it does result in that veterancy upgrade coming through. Yeah, super important here is. I mean, the Farimba, is it going to be alive? And the king is actually exposed, but he hops back in. That was dicey. All right, Javelin's working down those battering rams. It's going to take a long time. You can see he's got he's up to 10 Javelin here, but the Men-at-Arms are going to be running underneath the Town Center. Going to be able to force him back at the same time that Town Center in the south side off brand Viper is, is going down. Uh, he's going to have to eject the king at some point and be a man on the run. These spearmen not doing enough for him. Yeah, you can see that the javelin's really really struggling up against those men-at-arms. And now that town center is under threat as well. But it looks like we've got a king on the ground on the south side of the map. He's going to pop the movement speed. No, not just yet. It's the Yam Network. Never mind me. Yam Network. He doesn't actually have the food in the bank for it. Keep in mind, he's playing the Mongols, so no quick walls coming through, and the village is going to be able to come to the front line. He's going to be running this king up towards the north side of the map. There is an outpost up here. He might be able to buy himself a little bit more time, but it's going to be a surround, and it looks like Walmart Viper will be the first one to go down in this game. Rest in peace, little snake. It was a pleasure getting to watch you try and grow into a, a beautiful, strong, venomous creature. But unfortunately, at the end of the day, are, are, are Vipers venomous? I feel like they probably are, right? I'm, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that's an accurate statement. Mm. Now, interesting. This is really interesting for the game state because there's five players on the north side, all just kind of passively sharing the sea. Vortex is kind of the odd man out on the south side. He has no access to the water right now. He's got two relics in the regnets, but what something he has is just a ton of space. If he soaks up the space, he got some 50 pop space, so he'll have some power in the late game here compared to some of these other players. And the king from Kasva on the run as well, getting run down by longbows. Do you see this? I see it. I've been watching it. The king is he's running the gauntlet right now, trying his best to keep his head above water, but there's so many units out here. It's it's just he's done a big loop around the base, a big loop de loop. But I, I don't know where where the battering rams have gone. But <laughs> the king is coming back. Welcome home, king. It's been beautiful watching you on your walk this morning. And uh, fortunately, breakfast is served. We've got steaks uh, and a little bit of stone. That king is limping around on one leg. <laughs> He's saying, hey guys, go on without me as he runs away. <laughs> I love the kings in this game. They're such cowards. Look at all the peasants dying to the raid. He doesn't even take them with them. They don't even have swords. Yeah, they don't even have swords. Not even willing to fight. They have a shield though, so <laughs> willing to cower behind the, their shield. Well, it looks oh, like man. the second landmark is going to be going down here. A lot of villagers already taken out. And Matthias, I mean, the king has managed to escape. But for how long is going to be the question. Yeah, I mean, regardless of if the king lives or not, I mean, Cass was out of this game, right? Like, yeah. I, I don't see a world in which he recovers. His TC is destroyed, and he's got Vils. Every single one of them is being chased. He's trying to get some splits off. The king is hiding in the wood line now. He's just going to hang out over there. I think the real part that kind of prevents comebacks in this game is the treason ability. Obviously, you've got to pay resources for it. It costs 400 gold. But the fact that it reveals it, if people know that you're a bit weakened, they can just say, okay, there's the king. Let's go for it. Whereas if that treason ability didn't exist, it would make comebacks a lot more possible. For sure. This king is getting hunted down. There's actually a knight now from the tease hunting the king. Also interesting to point out is a large army for Kor starting to grow. He was able to wrestle control of these two central gold mines and that seems to have supported him into putting Sass on the back foot. Large number of spears and man-at-arms though for Sassy. Gonna try and hold. Yeah, he's got a nice little base here, but never feels oh. good going for a Burgrave as the Holy Roman Empire does it. Kor moving south with his army potentially gonna look... Maybe just freeing up the stone mine so he can grab some of the stone? Or is he actually going to try and make a move on Vortex? He could be. Yeah, th I mean, th there's a lot of units here. There's battering rams as well. And if he's able to take out Vortex, I mean, th this is such a prime target in this game because Vortex... Now, I, I will just mention, we did see a king go down just before, but it was to be expected. I mean, we've been watching Casper limping around the map for a couple of minutes now. Um, but... I think this is such a great target to go for somebody like Vortex because he's already managed to pick up a kill early on and that's going to be a threat into the late game. And if you don't take them out this early, 
it's going to mean that they're able to sit there. They're able to, you know, build up and, and they will be that threat that will stab you in the back late, later on in this game. Yeah, it's just interesting how Core is approaching this. By by moving his army south, he actually exposes himself on the north, unless some sort of agreement was made here between Core and Sass to chill for a bit, because if they get if they keep fighting for too long, it can become problematic, and this is a big army. Yeah, this is this a, king is in danger. This is a huge army coming in right now. Uh, Core sitting on 63 military pop compared to Vortex, who's only on 20. And we do see the King does get popped out. He's going to throw the movement speed on it as well. He's looking ahead over towards the west side of the map. But look at this. Straight away, Core is going to be spotting out that King. And he's running straight past the Knights. He says, see you later. Nice little block attempt coming through from Vortex. He's getting really good trades through on this. But the King is going to be able to make it over towards that keep on the west side of the base through for Vortex. He should be fine. He should be safe. The blocks were pretty strong there, but now Arbalatria are going to be coming through. Remember, there's battering rams that are involved somewhere in this fight. There are battering rams, and it looks like they're just sitting underneath the town center. So a whole bunch of battering rams kind of being useless, realistically, throughout this mid-game. Yeah, this fight, I don't think went the way Kor was expecting. He, he kind of got bloodthirsty, wanted to chase that king around. But, I mean, it gave it gave Vortex a chance to run, and, and he got a lot of good trades against Nights. Like you said, really good micro from Vortex there. Such a solid player, able to hold that and react pretty efficiently there, but still a lot of rams, man. Yeah, yeah, a lot more rams coming down. Uh, now, there, there is a keep up on the reinforcement line. On top of that, uh, the reinforcements are going to be a little bit slower because there is no gold coming through. But you talked earlier, you mentioned that Sass is just kind of sitting out, just chilling out like John Cena in the back of the limousine. All of a sudden, He's decided, well, it looks like I'm a little bit angry and I'm going to make, I'm going to make work of what you've done. Uh, and now as a result, Core has to move away from that attack on Vortex. Yeah, no, that's really interesting. It kind of made sense. Like if Sass and Core had made some sort of miniature truce to say, oh my gosh, Vortex just got a kill. That's 50 more pop. Like you said, if he scales, we're both in trouble. And it looks like maybe Sass just surprise attacked here a bit and this king is in danger now a lot of danger actually that's a huge army with Manganel support as well yeah oh boy Mago's rolling in off the back looks like he's going to be focusing down the guild hall if the guild hall goes down Kaur's going to be in trouble this is a key to Kaur's late game success there's 27 gold 2700 gold in it I don't actually know what happens if if Kaur doesn't uh excuse me I'm pretty sure you probably wanted to click that button Kaur 2700 gold from Core just went kablammo. Core trying to defend here, looking to throw down the Red Palace. Oh, Manganel shot is massive off the top rope. Arbalatre looking to find all of these men at arms in a choke point. We'll be able to do it, but the Manganel, oh my lord, is doing so much work. Keepers managed to come up. Knights managed to take out the Manganel, and the defense comes back through. Still at the same time, the Red Palace is coming up, and Core doing his best to try and hold on right now. King. He's going to try and get to the Red Palace, but he's being hunted by all these man-at-arms. It looks like he's going to make it. Wait, maybe not. No, nope, maybe not. Looks like there's a block coming through. Oh, but the king jukes and he steps left, steps right, and he goes straight through to the goal line. Beautifully played right there by Kaur, managing to keep the king alive. Yo, Muhammad Ali in here. <laughs> Swift like the butterfly, man. He just ducked one dodge. Anything. Left, right, center, like you said. Right through that army for red. That's got to feel bad there for Sass, because that was a killing blow. He, he had the opportunity. That was right in his hands. Well, speaking of killing blows, I feel sorry for all the colorblind people that are watching right now, but I can assure you, Blade is hunting on this south side of the map. But Vortex somehow manages to keep the king alive. The keep goes down, but with that, the king still lives. Vortex doing an absolutely clutch job on this south side of the map to keep the king alive. And notably, Matisse and, and uh, Divine, kind of like you said, these players on these edges just going to hang out and chill. And when they attack, it's going to be with a lot of force. Remember, Matisse got that extra 50 pop space, so English in this late game is going to be terrifying. And Sass just threw away a lot of his army, so potentially in trouble here to an attack from the north soon. Going to have to watch when these corner players, these pocket players, make their move and try to get some snipes in. Yeah, yeah, it's, you've got to be really careful of it. And we've seen this before, you know, game number one. Um, if I remember correctly, it was game number one of Outback Octagon 2. We saw Divine just chilling out in the corner of the map, untouched. Nobody attacked him. 
He just minded his own business. And then all of a sudden, late game came around and he just steamrolled over the top of everybody. He had so many resources in the bank. But we do now start to see Imperial Ages coming through. Elsback Palace going to be thrown down here for Vortex. For anybody who doesn't know, this is by far the best defensive landmark in the game. Better than the Spaskaya Tower, better than the Red Palace. It is the best landmark because it reduces the damage that all buildings take within its influence. On top of that, it's also got access to emergency repairs. On top of that, it's also got access to slate and stone construction. It's also got access to reinforced defenses for all those defenses around it. And of course, on top of that, it's also got a little bit of extra health. It is, it's definitely my favorite landmark uh, when it comes to defense. Yeah, that, that damage reduction is just so clutch. Like, torches do basically no damage to it. Even traps take forever, and you tap you, you, you top that off with the E-Repair, and everything's just looking pretty. But, I mean, Berkshire going up in the very north of the map for Matisse. He's running as king up there, the elite king now, as he's an imp. As it runs to the north corner, he's got a little, little hidey hole. Doesn't look like he's carrying the shield anymore. Maybe he got rid of the shield, he's upgraded now. He's going for a, a bit of a nicer cape. Uh, and we do see the uh, Barkshire Palace also going up for Blade on the south side of the map. And the question I'm going to be throwing around is, what does Divine, or how does Divine look to play this? Because he, he, he's really sitting in prime position here. He's still got this land bridge that's open. And obviously that's a bit of a threat, but he knows that Matt is... Matt is his main business is going to be over on the east side. He's got plenty of players to work through over there. You know, I don't even know if we've seen units cross that yet. I, I don't know if you have. I don't think I have. But I haven't been paying close attention. Oh, we might have been wrong about that. That could actually be just water, which would really make his position a lot safer. Yeah, you know what? You um, might be right. It, it could be like the case. I don't, I don't know but if you've seen the map Holy Island, but there's yeah. a whole bunch of like land that looks exactly like that. And you'd think you'd be able to cross it, but you can't. That might just be a little bit too deep. I'm just not sure. You have to kind of see a player try it. Um, interesting, though. The battle's raging on here in the south. Got Sass moving in with a huge unit mass, but into a keep. Has the red palace as well, so there's that sneaky arbalist emplacement. But doesn't have boiling oil, so this keep is going to go down. Yeah, should be able to take it out here. Now, one thing to note is that guild hall is still sitting on the ground. I don't actually know what happens if he repairs it here, whether he's going to be able to get that gold back, whether it's, you know, going to be able to start from the beginning again. But Core doing a pretty decent job massing up units here. Ablutria mass, together with the veteran archer, should be able to clean this up well and truly. Yeah. He's completely fine here. He's going to be able to hold. It's a bit of an attack, but not nothing too big. My, my thing for... I, I would bring back the Divine, because you asked a really good question earlier, which is, like, what's his game plan going to be? And it looks like it's going to just have to be Attack Blade, right? I don't think he really has any other options. He could make a play for the water, um, try, and, try and control that, but it takes a lot of population to have a bunch of ships. And uh, I think if you're in Divine's position, you have to look for a snipe soon, because you're not going to be a successful late game player with only 200 pop, right? There's players on the map currently scaling with population space, and that late game matters so much as uh, Blade gonna have to retreat and defend against two players now. Yeah, o on top of that, we've got Matiz that's finally gonna be pushing in towards the base of Sass here. Sass has the king inside. Actually, I'm not sure where that king is. The king was inside, or at least I thought the king was inside the town center. I don't see the king at the moment. Oh, he, never mind. He, he managed to make it out. He, he's actually evacuated already. He's well and truly off towards that east side of the map. It looks like the army from Matiz should be enough to overrun the defense that's back here. Yeah, plenty of elite men at arms here. And now, as well, core in the mix. They're just going to take down these TCs, take down the base. Economy, Sass is in trouble. A lot of trouble. He's got the emergency repairs, though, and we can see that core's actually coming to his defense. I say that. Not really, not genuinely, but forces away those units. So... A little bit of a 2v1 at the moment. Sass getting caught in the middle, stuck in the middle. But that is the case. That's just how the cookie crumbles in these games sometimes. So I just caught this, but the reason they backed off is Core and I think also Matisse just both popped their kings out, used the ability and popped them back in. And this king in the south is not looking healthy. He, he, is, he is very exposed and Core knows where that is. I saw him use the ability. He's coming. Which king are we talking about? 
Tors used his king to spot Sass's king. Oh, Sass's right. king ran to the east, and there's not enough there to defend it. Yeah, there really Cole isn't. Just make a bunch of rams. There's no economy. There's no military. The king is just on the run, and here comes Matisse as well. They both use oh. the ability, I think. And this king is in dire straits. Oh, oh my. This is terrible, but it looks like he's going to try and duke it out. There, there's no scouts here with this. So he manages to run past all the military. And now they meet each other on the top side. The king somehow manages to squeeze his way through. And we've got problems because Matthias is going to get caught in the position here up against Core. They're fighting up against each other. They're looking for the king. Yeah, what a juke by Sass. That was, that was brilliant. I mean, still his position is dire, but getting the enemies to fight each other and a deer just gets dumped. I don't know why the deer did anything. What did the deer do? <laughs> that, was a, that was like 18 longbows just taking him out. And look at this. Core just getting eaten alive here. He's going for a stroll. Core I mean, wasn't here to fight Matisse. He's just like, dude, stop hitting my army. I just want to kill the king. But the king is in this keep and it's right next to Matisse. So Matisse should have first pickings on that king. Yeah, but fortunately it's, it's in a keep though. But yeah, I'm sure you've seen right now. Uh, Divine yeah. is having a little bit of fun in the base of Blade. Uh, I didn't even see it on my screen because the Blade hand cannon is just absolutely eviscerated the king before I could even work out what had happened. Yeah, I, <laughs> I don't even know. I think it was in the White Palace. I think he ejected the king, thinking he could, he could escape. And I think I, I think divide immediately died and one shot that. Remember those those uh, those Chinese hand cannons at the extra range, just so smart. And that's exactly what Divine needed for this position. These little corner spots, that 50 more pop, gonna be clutch going into the late game here. Because Matisse has 50 pop, he's not gonna stand without it. And now Bombard's on the field for Matisse. This king once again in danger. Matisse moving up with his army as well. King's on the run. King is on the run once again. Sass is going to be trying to force two players to fight up against each other once again. That was, a, that was a beautiful use of the king, baiting those armies towards the corner and then escaping out the back door. Let's see if he's able to do it again. I mean, probably not. No. It seems like Matiz is keeping no. track of this king pretty well at this point, forces him back up towards that top side. He says, you ain't going anywhere, buddy. But look, he pops the movement speed. He's trying to get a little bit of a juke coming through right now. Will he make it back towards the base? He's got to keep back here. A couple of units coming through. Core trying to find his way back in. Springled in play. Oh, Springled going to be taking shots down. But now under pressure, crossbow and hand cannon is going to be looking to try and eliminate this king. It's a big run. I don't think he's going to be able to do it. I think this might be it for him. One more shot. Matiz takes out Sass. And that's going to be two for Matis. So that puts him into a point lead position, which is a great spot for him to be considering his remoteness on this map. It's starting to look like these remote players are going to be the ones holding it down. Vortex able to take out Budget Viper early, going to be in a good spot. Matisse taking out Kasva early and now Sass and then um, Divine taking out Blade. So we have a couple players on the board now, both in points for the whole tournament, but also for population for the rest of this game. And I think we've got to buckle down. This is going to take a while to find a victor here. This isn't going to be fast. Yeah. Next up is how Core survives. Can he <laughs> camp this middle spot? Like, does he survive? I don't know. <laughs> I feel like it's the same situation from the last game where we had Striker in the middle. The only problem is, is Core is limping at the moment. It feels that way. He's sitting on 69 vils, which is a nice amount of vils. But at the end of the day, you need a little bit more than that. Um, and the other thing to note is it looks like the guild hall did actually lose all of the gold when it did go down. So Core going to have to start back. Uh, and we did see he had 420 gold in the bank. So Core just hitting the, the wombo combo of cool numbers here. Yeah, it's actually super punishing. I, I never knew that interaction. I, I did not realize that when the Gipthal died, you just lose everything. I kind of assumed it would either stay there or just automatically use, but yeah, no, the fact that that's gone is brutal. That was a lot of savings. Um, but the Red Palace is going to be what Core latches onto here. And the sea a little more open now. It looks like uh, Divine was done with the water income. The fish just drying up too much. Going to rely on the granaries now. Much more pop efficient, I believe, late game are the granaries. Yeah, it's it's an interesting um, point that, that you make with that. So I, I, I'm pretty sure if you, even if you get the upgrades, it's still not worth it to go into the fishing in, in the late game. It's just better to go over to villages. Yeah, well, a lot of it's because the fishing AI, like, so you, like, 
You know how the fish regenerate 50 food every minute? Right. Uh, your fishing boats will go around in groups and kind of like vacuum it all up, right? But then like seven fishing boats each have like four food and then they go to the next fish. This is a lot of detailed explanation as to why <laughs> this may be too detailed, but basically they'll all roam around and at a time time so unless you do these manual splits it kind of falls apart um and i can definitely imagine why divine didn't like, rely on that um also granaries are super strong so yeah yeah they're, they're great buildings to have especially in the formation that he's got them here all tucked in close together now one thing to note is he actually moved out a whole bunch of his granaries uh, and his farms he's deleted all of them so i don't know what he's got in store for us here but i've got my suspicions it could be wonderful <laughs> I mean, potentially. Oh, look at that. He found a little choke point in this uh, mountain to find this little gold mine, too. That's cute. Oh, you looked at it at the same time. That's look how many bills yeah, so he's got this. here. He's got 53 bills here gathering this gold. He, he's hungry for gold. I love the hats in Imperial Age China. I just love the hats when they're on the gold mine like this in synchrony. They're all synchronized and stuff. Oh, it's fun. Not a lot of action on the map, though, as uh, things are cooling down as players set up their positions notably vortex is trading very small trade 30 gold but could be expanded to the south corner it's honest work i mean even if it's only 30 gold it's it's not terrible uh yeah so where's he trading to so he's got the the, the neutral trading post over on the east side so yeah definitely could expand this down towards this bottom corner and that would probably be pushing it from what if he's getting 30 for that down towards that bottom corner maybe up towards maybe like 96 and he we actually throws down the market as we're watching it uh, so we will have an answer very soon, but that's something really strong. You know, we often talk about what are ways that, that players can call out other players and say, hey, let's team up on this guy. Trade is, is a big element of that because it is infinite resources. And, you know, wh while you might have uh, one or two relics being the Holy Roman Empire and it's nice, trade is significantly more effective. Notably, the only other player who could trade would be Matisse, right? But as English, with this many farmers, not really sure it's necessary, right? Um, I don't know how many he has exactly on food. Only 37 vil? Wait, that can't be right. Uh, I'm seeing... Oh, I'm doing the wrong hockey. Okay, never mind. Yeah, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> okay, cool. I, I was going to say, I'm, I'm seeing 143 vils that he's got. I, I, I did control A, not control shift A, and I was very confused. <laughs> but we're good. <laughs> It's like, how is it this low? Yeah, no, he's got plenty of resources for the time being. Um, building up a small navy, actually. Adding in an arrow ship to go scout out uh, Divine's position on the water. And there is actually a dead dock that you could naval trade to if you're Matisse as well. True. Be quicker. Yes, I, I totally forgot about really naval strong. trade, yeah. Yeah, you can't do it with neutral trade posts, but a dead dock could suffice. And this is a big army of knights. So it looks like the trade that Vortex had, had gone for is 123 gold, which is really substantial. But Korra's recognized this almost immediately and brought down elite horsemen to deal with it. Yeah, but there's 90 knights walking into Korra's base for this. Like, there's a bit of a pushback. You, know, you, you push me here, I punch you there. Uh, it feels a little disproportionate if you're asking me, but... That's a lot of knights. That, that that is a large amount of knights. Uh, I, that's kind of that's kind of wild. Uh, let's see exactly how much damage comes through. Boiling oil about to come in three seconds away for him, but there's so many knights here. I don't even think it's going to matter at this point. Core picking Down. a fight with somebody he probably shouldn't have. Should have kept the units at home, Core and the King now. Outside, it looks like the body block comes through. It's not going to matter. Core going down. Vortex assassinating him in the blink of an eye. Wow. So you, you tried to deny the trade and Kor just gets immediately punched in the mouth for that. Uh, Vortex having none of it. He's like, oh, I was letting you live, you know? That was a lot of nights. Um, brutal stuff. And once again, Vortex's position gets better. I think every time he's made a meaningful move on the map, it's, it's significantly has improved his position. Now he has 300 pop space. Remember, he, he took out Budget Viper earlier, so... Two eliminations for him in this game and a lot of free population. That's going to give him a leg up against Divine, who only has one. Yeah, really good call. Uh, I, I I can't believe we just watched that happen. That was really like instant karma. AoE 3, or AoE 4 <laughs> edition rather. Not AoE 3 edition, AoE 4 edition. Uh, that was... Uh, well, my game froze. It hung for a second, but I think we're okay. Oh, gosh, that's so scary when it hangs like that. 
I guess when there's this many knights on the screen, it's got to do something to 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 cope with the uh, with the power. Exactly, and Vortex just rebuilds the market, says, "Nice try," <laughs> and uh, he's back to trading. Poor and core. now I think. Oh, his trade route is crazy. Okay, he added a gate. Okay, his trade was going a wonky route. I was like, "Where's he trading to?" But it's just he didn't have a gate. Starting to add those stone walls, and interestingly enough. We didn't talk about this a lot early on, but notice the sacred sites. Yes. Divine just has yeah, one basically for free right now. I mean, Vortex could contest that. And then the other one is kind of on the south side of this pond. So Matisse looks like he's considering a wonder with the amount of walling I'm seeing. The, right? one, the one thing that I get concerned about is uh, for Matisse, even though he, he's thinking about going for that wonder, there is a real chance that he gets undercut by a sacred victory. The problem is that there's a sacred site in both players' bases. So we've got a sacred site in the base of Divine, a sacred site in the base of Vortex, but that third sacred site, it's on the shoreline. Oh. And there's nothing that stops all three of these sacred sites being taken in the event that, let's say, Divine manages to snipe away the King of Vortex or vice versa. Then all of a sudden, if there's any threat of that wonder, you can just take all three sacred sites, Put a keep or two down on that one in the middle and just laugh at your enemy as they try their best to take that sacred site from you. Yeah, notably though, notably though, Vortex hasn't full stonewalled and Divine is China. So you have this huge Fire Lancer threat late game with China where they just send 80 after your king, right? And if that happens, you're in trouble. And I think we might be seeing attempt eventually. Uh, Divine has 21 Fire Lancers on the field right now. But, I mean, Divine might also be thinking about a wonder. He doesn't nearly have the resources, but he has the position. And, oh my gosh, look at the Great Wall Gatehouse he built. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, a, it's a pretty nice little spot he's got back here for himself, isn't it? I, I'm, I'd be curious to see whether he deletes the keep and puts the wonder in the corner. Uh, it, I suspect that's probably what he would look to do. I mean, he doesn't have the resources for it at the moment. I think if anybody's close to it, as you mentioned, I think Matiz has got really nice spawn. Uh, for it with all these extra wall layers that are coming through. Yeah, and on top of that, a lot of minerals spawned in the north as well. We, we noted that with cast was spawn at the start of the game. Like, there are all these 8k golds and stones, and it's just so many resources which he could exchange at the market to basically buy the res he needs, right? He has 15k gold. He yeah. could easily configure this into wonder time. Um, it's just a matter of when or if he feels comfortable. Because you have to think about it, he doesn't see the whole map, right? Matisse, is, Matisse has to only work with what he knows, which is there's still two players on the board. If he if he goes for that wonder, he could just get doubled and feel like he dies. So he might be thinking he has to wait a bit on the wonder. He doesn't want to be the first to build it because you become the first to target yourself, right? Or to get targeted. Exactly, right? yeah. It, it's a tricky, dicey situation for all these players. Honestly, looking at the resources that he's got, though, I, I think he could probably do it. I think he could get, he could get away with it. Uh, the main issue that you're going to have are these Holy Roman Empire Knights, though. There's so many of them on the field already. He's got 134 at the moment, Vortex does. And, I mean, he's got 30 of them in queue. The the one thing that he's he's lacking on is just gold. Doesn't have much gold in the bank. So it's trade that he's really got to start working towards. Yeah, and funnily enough, there were these three gold mines, these big AKs next to Blade's old base. And somehow Divine's just kind of like passively taking those. And it feels like that was an opportunity for Core, or sorry, for Vortex to uh, to just take those. He's going to scout it now, so I suspect the Knights are going to be on the move. And it, <laughs> immediately he sent a detachment. <laughs> it's it's just a few. Only 21 Knights heading over there now. Uh, but ov obviously, I think uh, Divine's going to realize that and say, well, if the scout's here, you know, it's, it's that classic case. If there's smoke, there's fire. And uh, with the scout being a little bit smoky here, the fire is quickly coming up the rear. Yeah, a lot of ills about to go down here. The army for for uh, Divine is far, far away. He only has 55 pop spacing units, so could get overwhelmed on the front, but he's got a huge layer of wall, so he, he would just immediately remax. Like, look at all the production buildings he has. He's in no danger of getting sniped. But now Matisse coming south with his army, getting bold, getting brave, forward positions, forward racks. Yeah, this, and th this is exactly what he needs in this position, right? Because if you can keep the fight going here, then they're not going to be pushing your main base. Which is obviously where the uh, where the wonderful things go. <laughs> yeah, it also, I mean, four relics for Matisse on top of this, his position 
has to be the strongest by far. Zero relics for Define, very few like late game income sources outside of what the the officials running around getting tax, I guess. But yeah. Beyond that, what does he really have Which for himself? Which like, can be pretty decent in the late game. That's one thing to remember. Uh, and he has built these these extra TCs a little bit further out, which I do like for collecting tax. True. It, it, it is good, but like, I don't know. Vortex is trade. Vortex is two relics is HRE. Matisse is four relics. Could set up trade, but also it's just English, so we'll not need trade this game probably. All right. Well, there, there's about to be a not as good. there's about to be a battle between Matiz and Vortex. I'm I'm curious. How many knights do you think? How many knights do you think that uh, Vortex loses in this fight? I'm I'm gonna go with he loses seven knights. All right, let's count. So, so he's got 159. With, <laughs> well, I've got 133 selected. Let's see what happens. He's already lost. Oh, he's already lost seven. So he's lost a huge amount already, a lot more than I thought. But it's going to be an obvious cleanup right now. Yeah. I mean, you could say this was a scouting group. You know, information <laughs> secure. Mission accomplished, boys. We'll get them next time. It, right. it, it was a uh, small scouting party of 150 population. Yeah, no, no, no. It we, was a loan of army from my father. Take a note from the king. That's just a detail. <laughs> Those are the peasants. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so, in total, he lost 36 knights there. Uh, up against however many... I mean, I, I didn't actually count how many mat matches had, but I, I suspect it was close to about 100 population. That's worth. Yeah, it's interesting how this is going. I mean, Divine has played this so passively. Aside from that one snipe on the white tower for Blade. He really hasn't gotten into many fights. I, I, he's just sitting back with his army, just soaking up the resources. It's it's kind of interesting. He's kind of giving time for these other players to decide who's going to win. Yeah, and I think that's something that you've got to be very careful of, especially considering you've got an English player in the game. Now, the, the first game that, um, that Divine played, he was actually playing as the English. And he was in that fortunate position where you've basically got these super farms that are also generating gold and are also, you know, having their what is it an extra 30 percent gather speed on top of what they've got it's a it's a crazy amount of food that's being generated over there and do you really want to play with fire like that Ooh. yeah I, I i think you're right i heard it did you hear that divine's going for it he just deleted a whole bunch of, he deleted a whole bunch of villages he's on 75 vills now 175 military pop he just deleted 25 more how many fire lancers does he have in queue is the question yes <laughs> Actually, not too many. <laughs> not too many. Only 14 stables might be a bit low at this point. He's going for a large mixed army, so no just abuse snipes, right? <laughs> not just going to be sending the Fire Lancers in. It, it, but yeah, he is deleting. It's a bit strange to me that he just didn't, like, he hasn't hit the king. I mean, we've got Omnivision, so it's a bit different. But, like, w when you consider the fact he's got the Imperial Palace, which he has recently used, he should be able to see a pretty good outline of the base of Vortex and be like, Mm, I don't think there's a I don't think there's a stone wall here like it, it, realistically there's nothing to stop even just 30 or 40 fire lancers coming in standing on this sacred site sieging down the keep and getting the kill like there's emergency repairs sure it's not gonna do much he doesn't even have the cannon emplacement I'd say he doesn't I'd say vortex might disagree with you he might say there's no stone walls but he's got a wall of knights that covers an entire screen if you zoom in a little um <laughs> So that's, I guess, what he's going to be relying on. But I think you're totally right. Like, it seems super snipeable. And I think Matisse and Divine, if they attack at the same time, could potentially overwhelm this knight army. It's going to be hard uh, because I think even if he splits the two armies, if he splits his knight mass into two, I think he could fight both of them. He just has that many knights. But I don't know. Divine has 247 military pop. He has three villagers. This is an all-in. It's coming. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I'm impressed. I'll say that much. I didn't think Divine had it in him. Uh, normally, he, as you mentioned before, like he's a very passive player. Doesn't really go for, for plays like this very often. And I'm curious what he looks to achieve with it. I mean, because a, a king kill is definitely on the cards here. But even if you kill the king, but then you're just going to be up against Matiz, who throws down a wonder, and you've got no villagers. And as long as he kills your army once, he wins the game. 
Yeah, I wonder if it's about the timing, right? Because if you kill, because I think at this point, Divine has probably assessed the Sacred Site situation. He has two of them under his control. True. Not really firmly, but he's got two of them. He's got Bausch runs on the sea, so he's unlikely to get super surprised, although Matisse is trying to contest that, so we've got some scuffles on the sea. Maybe he and does look he... for a snipe on the king, and then looks to take that sacred site, and just uses the army to defend the sacred sites. Maybe that's the play. He's yeah, still got like, a fair I bit don't... of resources in the bank, and that, that's a lot of spears, a lot of horsemen that he can throw down. The difference in this position is that the amount of stone on the map, um, in the sims, obviously, right? But, like, look at Matisse. He's still mining stone, and he has 6k in the bank. He's added a whole nother layer of defenses, kind of up front further, kind of at this halfway point along the right side. And if he's able to hold this, I think we could be seeing the Wonder Placement soon. He might start to feel confident, although he saw that Night Mask, so he has to be prepared for that. Yeah, oh, man. yeah, really good call. You can see Divine unsure about exactly how he wants to play it here. Still retreating back, falling falling back for the moment. I love the fact he's got so many hand cannoneers. 105 hand cannoneers here for Divine. That's that's insane. That's just a crazy amount. So we've got a bit of a standoff, right, Drongo? What breaks this? I wonder. What? Like, because it's, it's the class, it's the Mexican standoff, right? You got three people, each pointing a gun at the other two people, right? So, like, is it just Matisse building a wonder? You know what? I think that there's a world where Matisse puts down a wonder and Vortex has to be convinced to go and attack it. And if Divine can somehow convince Vortex to go and attack it and at the same time go and look to try and kill the king, there's actually a world where he could do that and then capture the sacred site and undercut. Oh, yeah, I, but I also just saw a really good comment in the chat and I want to hi highlight this. Why the heck did Divine delete 200 villagers <laughs> if, <laughs> if he wasn't going to immediately use his army? Did he just delete half of his army? I, uh, I think, I think no, he no. deleted like one, one Stop. unit. Oh no, you can see, yeah, it looks like he deleted maybe, maybe five fire siege. lances. Yeah, maybe for Siege. Yeah, he's making more bombards, yeah. Wait, no, 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 no. He's building transports. What? Oh. Oh. What? Oh. What is this? What is this? Because the king is in the Berkshire. <laughs> All the army is over on that east side of the map. There's no production back here. Oh, I never even saw the... Look, oh my god. He but won the water. He, and he's just gonna go. And But look, he's, he's pushing back the line of sight right now. The outpost is under pressure. I don't know, Matisse is going to have so much time to react to this. And, dude, is Matisse reading the situation really well or what? He's kind of backing up his army. Yeah, he is. Like, is he going to get back in time? And then what, is, what does Vortex do during this time? Does he just chill? Because he has trade, so he has the best. Ah, uh, no, Matisse has just as much gold income. But I think he's still mi mining gold. Yeah, he's still mining gold with Vils. No, he's there not. Doesn't seem to be any way for him to get into the base of Divine either. So I don't think there's no no real chance of a snipe coming through on that king. But yeah, a couple yeah, more deletes might. coming through on the fire lances, and indeed that army is moving back for Matiz. But oh, one thing to note is that army's not that big. It's only 124 pop, and compared to Divine, he, he's a hundred over the top of that. Yeah, but the difference is, like, Matisse is going to have the production. Like, he'll, he'll just be able to produce stuff there. Um, oh, man, this is... <laughs> Divine this just, is tense. Divine just deleted all of his fire lances. I, I've got is no he idea why. all of them? Yeah, every so single he, one. Is he queuing up Vils again? He, yeah, he's queuing back Vils. No he way. He realized it was a mistake. No he way. He realized it was a mistake. He's, he's like, dude, like... Well, there's no fighting happening. Look at Matisse's bank. Matisse's 80k food banked, and Divine only has 15. If if this comes to just an infinite deathmatch, like Matisse could delete all his vills now and be way ahead because he was stockpiling. So, I mean, you, you have to be stockpiling, right? Like you can't. Yeah. You can't delete everybody. <laughs> you need somebody to man the fields. Honestly, at this point, I feel like Matisse just buys a thousand stone, throws down a wonder, deletes all of his vills, and just laughs at the enemy with his. Uh, hundreds and thousands of units queued up. The only thing to note is the production... I mean, the production's pretty good for him on this south flank, but it'll get eaten alive by the knights. This is... 
I'm just trying to think about who makes the first move. Nobody will. Except Matisse. I think eventually Matisse gets impatient. Or honestly, Vortex could consider it, right? He's got 6,000 stone, exactly. 6,000 wood. It's just the gold. He just he, waits he, for the trade. He's got the trade, yeah, exactly. So he'll be fine on that. Like, he's got 25 knights in queue, well popped. He's got scouts kind of positioned everywhere. I don't know if you've... Yes, that, but yeah, I've seen the scouts. He's got a really good setup. He's not going to get surprised. Interestingly, he's using them as, like, pseudo outposts. Yeah, that's it. Just conserving wood, maybe, because wood is scarce. So if you just waste wood on outposts and they just get rolled over by an army, it's True. not worth it. Um, not sure. So oh, but he's got a... Wait, wait, wait. Vortex sees the transports. Yeah, yeah, he's got a scout sitting Look right next scout. to him. that scout. Yeah. That's so cute. He sees this play happening. That might be... If he sees those cross, he might make his move. But how, how does he go about making a move, though? Because he's got... I mean, he's got vills that are relatively close, so he could just bring them up and throw down Siege Workshops. I guess that's the play for him. You just throw down Siege Workshops, and I'm assuming he's picked up his uh, his train time upgrade. Oh, he hasn't. He hasn't He hasn't actually picked up his train time upgrade from the military or from the blacksmith, so he doesn't have military academy. Um, so it means that he's going to be training a little bit slower on the units, but yeah, everything... I mean, at this point, uh, I, I feel like poking them with a stick now. You know, it's the classic do something. But for some reason, Matt is on 89k food is throwing down more farms. Well, you have to think about it like this. It's the only way to get gold unless he had built trade, which he absolutely could have, but he chose not to. Um, so he's going to have to deal I, with it. Yes. I will just point this out. Uh, 4k gold over here. 61 gold on that one. He's got 7k, 7.8k gold over there. 4k gold over here. Uh, he's on a 7k gold mine over here. There's a 4k there. There's a 200 on that one. I mean, there's a couple of ways he could be looking to gather some gold. See, you're not thinking about it from the player's perspective, Drongo. <laughs> do you want to have to build a mining camp, send the vills, or do you want to build a farm and never think about it again and have infinite gold? That's huh? true. Uh, huh? I mean, huh? I can't argue with that logic. It, it, it makes perfect sense to me. I'd yeah, embrace your inner lazy, and you'll understand this decision. <laughs> Actually, I don't, I don't know why he's doing that. <laughs> Enclo um, enclosures is a real religion, I'll have you know that. He's burning. He's burning the stuff now. He's making space. Is he actually? He's, he's burning the pit mine in the north. I, oh, I yeah. think we're going to be seeing it soon. It's a slow prep. Nobody's going to make the first move. I, I, I legitimately think Matisse is waiting for someone to get eliminated and he'll instantly build the wonder and try and defend. Because I don't think he can defend 2v1. And I think that's kind of smart, but at the same time that you kind of have to try, because you're, you're risking letting someone 2v1 and then win potentially. Or letting, like, what if Divine had enough reds for a wonder, which he absolutely does not with 50 stone. But he does have 33 bills, so he may have it in the next hey, hour or two. If you assume, if you assume that every hundred food you gather could be transferred into ten gold, and then every three hundred gold you get that way <laughs> could become a hundred stone, I think he could have a wonder in forty hours. Okay. At this rate. All right. Uh, I'm I'm ready for it. I'm ready for it. But you, you know what I'm finding interesting is that Matt is he got a bit impatient with the defense, right? Like he he knew something was up over on that west side. The Baoshuan took out the outpost. He brought back his units. But now those units have gone back once again over onto that east flank. Vortex now has enough for a wonder as well. I don't think he's going to be throwing it. The, the, the thing is, where does Vortex even place his wonder? I mean, does he delete some farms that are back here? He doesn't really have a good spot for a wonder. Well, I think you're right. I think you're right. I think Vortex also doesn't hasn't really set up the stone walls. Oh, we see the vills going. Wonder's dropped. Okay, there Wonder it is. Wonder has been dropped. The Cathedral the of St. Thomas is upon us. Matt is, is the first one to blink just shy of 60 minutes into this game. The calm before the storm is over. Well, it, it might be here for a little bit longer, dude. He's going to immediately get doubled. 
right? Yeah, yeah, oh, for sure. There, there's no two ways about it. Um, well, actually, I say that so many times I've seen a wonder go down and immediately they turn on each other and they're like, I'm, I'm going to take you. I'm going to take your king and I'm going to get the kill because they, they both realize like the power of Matis right now is insane, right? Like when you, when you think about it, okay. I don't know how many production buildings he's got, but in a perfect world, he should be sitting on close to 100 production buildings right now. And they should all it be- It is happening. Sorry, I had to- I had Oh, the to transport interrupt. ships, the they transport ships. Happening. Yeah, the transport ships are going. Where does he drop them off though? What, what Do you think he just throws them down right here next to it? We've got Normandy. <laughs> you got, there's a little I, part of Brittany. Calais is a good option. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> you know, these, this, uh, I don't know where you go. You need more transports, though. He doesn't have enough. Unless, well, it depends on how deep he wants to go. I guess if he just goes here. Yeah, no, he's gone. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what. He could just go here and then pick up again. But this leaves him exposed to Divine, but, or sorry, to, to Vortex. But Vortex is moving north. He's having none of it. They're not having this wonder shenanigan. They're not going to let this happen. They want to go for the win. They don't just want to get another point by eliminating the other player and then coming in second. They want to win. Now, keep in so mind that together here. if if the wonder goes down, there's a really good chance that the king goes down as well. Oh, yeah. So it's almost guaranteed, right? Right. So it, it seems almost certain that uh, we either have a victory or we have the a demos? 1v1. The demos? There are so many units in these transports. These demos get sniped. Nice. Okay. <laughs> Beautiful coverage right there. Okay. <laughs> okay, sorry. That was a clencher. <laughs> okay. I love that Mattis oh, he... knew what was up, though. Ma Mattis was, was coming in. He's like, I know what you're going to do. Yeah, I, I think as soon as the Baoshuans were dealing with that. Oh, man. The... <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was about to say that demo just ducked under the B shots from the Baoshuan, but not quite. Oh my god. Oh no. Divine! Oh, no. He spots it! Remember, he has the scout! He sees the army from... from... He saw the scout! The scout! The clutch scout! Oh no. He saw the transport! He saw the He's transport. The backstab! Oh my gosh. This is why I, I said... You, you said... He's going for... Sacred oh, he's going, He's going for a sacred victory! Fight. He's going for the undercut! Oh my god, I didn't even realize! He was waiting for the army to go north. I wonder if there was even diplomacy at play. I wonder if Vortex said, yeah, 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 let's go for the wonder. And then he goes for sacred sites and back on the ships. <laughs> Somebody goes back on the ships. Everybody cancel D-Day. <laughs> We're canceling D-Day. <laughs> retreat, retreat. He realized, he realized that Vortex wasn't going to play by the rules. And so now he has to go back. But this clutch scout is going to see the return. He sees the army coming back, and so he's gonna know. Oh my god, that is maybe the funniest movement of troops I've ever seen. The that, funniest thing. That is a big brain play if I've ever seen it. That That is incredible. I, I can't believe he managed to find a way through this. Demo ships are on the shoreline right now. A couple knights gonna be running up towards it. A whole bunch more got baited into it. The demo is gonna be exploding. I think he took out about two knights. <laughs> I, I, think, I think that means nothing right now. Yeah. I mean, look at how many Vortex has 88 knights in queue. Keep in mind, he's had trade going this whole time. And his HRE with gold, you can do so much. Of course, Matisse has way more gold, <laughs> way more food and way more res, as English does. But the timer is on Vortex's side. And he's now building a bunch of keeps. And I feel like Divi uh, Divine's Kingmaker, right? Yeah, well, it, my question is, what does Divine do here? Divine's just sitting here like, okay. <sighs> I kill the guy with the wonder, the sacred victory wins. I kill the guy with the sacred sights, the wonder wins. And they're both going to defend with the intensity that that defense uh, would deserve. As you can see, Matiz is not moving. He's just happy. He's no, like, I've got a wonder. He's got a, he's got a couple of units coming through. Actually, has he deleted Vils? He hasn't deleted Vils yet. Wait. Matisse, Matisse deleted, deleted the wonder. wonder. Oh my god. To make sure that they teamed on, on Vortex. Wow. He realized my wonder's not going to work. I'm going to force Divine's hand, force him to attack Vortex because Matisse can just rebuild he the wonder. He can rebuild the wonder because he's got not so many really. resources. Probably, yeah. It, it's going to be expensive, but he can. He wanted to make sure that Divine wouldn't backstab him. Oh my gosh, the big brain Ooh. plays that are happening. These players are playing on another level right now.
I didn't think there was a way that Vortic could be could be outmaneuvered from a political standpoint. I thought he'd made the smartest move possible, but it turns out the biggest brain on the field wasn't in Vortex's head. It was in well, Matt's. I mean, Vortex is eight minutes. Let's keep in mind, eight minutes, but that is 110 hand cannons. And if there's anything that'll beat 177 knights, it's probably 111 Chinese hand cannons with the extra range. Palace guards to front line. If uh, if Vortex doesn't add mangonels, he'll he won't kill the the hand cannon mass, right? Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a good call. And keep in mind, these are Chinese hand cannons, but they don't have any buffs coming through from the Spirit Way. Now, obviously, for anybody who doesn't know, the Spirit Way uh, buffs up all of your Dynasty units, allows them when they die to pass on an upgrade or a buff that gives them extra attack speed. And that's really strong for these hand cannoneers because they do a lot of damage, but they don't have the strongest attack speed. When a Chukunu dies next to it or a Fire Lancer, uh, then it, it goes crazy into overdrive. Uh, but uh, not having that means that there's a, a bit of a reduction in the damage that will come out. But take a look at this. Huge amounts of knights now beginning to move over on the east shore. Do get picked up. Matiz starts pushing out of his own base. This... This is insane. Vortex has to defend both sacred sites, which is going to be really tough. And you know, another option is if I don't think there's enough time for it, but Divine could do a Fire Lancer switch and still go for the King Snipe because it's exposed as well. And that sacred site in the south is basically undefended. So there's lots of ways to turn off this sacred site victory. If, if Vortex doesn't die to the double, this game could continue. Like, I, I see a world in which they stop the sacred site and we still have three players on the board. Wow. Yeah, it, it's 100% possible. The one thing I'm noticing, though, is Matiz is not deleting villages. He has 150,000 resources in the bank and he still thinks keeping 100 villages on the board or in play is the right call. I got to disagree with that. That's a hard pass for me. I, th I think he's, he's got to. He's got to delete those villas. Got the Carrick's on the coast and the Bombard's on the land. It's gonna go try and take out some of these keeps. It will be efficient and quick with the Carrick's. They're extremely good here. Yeah, does he have all the upgrades? The, the oh, he damage is insane. Oh, Look at, did you see how much damage just got put out onto that keep though? That was crazy. Yeah, Carrick's are the beast of the land, of the, of the sea late game. They have insane DPS against buildings. There to destroy your fortifications and look at him go down and I don't think Vortex is ready for this and look at Divine his army on the left ready to go as well Vortex still has half of his army on the southern or the left sacred site he's gonna get sandwiched here really hard the sacred site starting to get exposed bombards on the right oh my gosh this fight is messy so this many knights though he's, he's engulfing the entire pink army just blue knights taking everything out and meanwhile divine still yet to come through and it means that it's a 1v1 that's exactly what vortex needs and now we see additional knights making their way over he's still leaving a couple down here just to keep that second sacred site safe but the surround is complete matches his army almost eviscerated but hold the horses just right now we were talking about the potential for a surround all of a sudden matches says actually I'm alive. I lived, bitch. The Carracks get so much damage in that fight, and just Knights isn't a strong enough composition. I think Vortex may have overestimated the power of pure Knights. I mean, it works to some degree, but you know, in these late game fights, surface area matters so much, he simply can't engage against the hand cannons. He can't engage against all the hand cannons both these players are bringing, so I don't know. Also, Vortex, only a thousand gold in the bank. Things are looking dicey for his timer. Four minutes remaining on the clock. Sacred Sight halfway captured by Matisse. Looks still like it's going to get this decapped, right? Yeah, it, it looks like it's going to go that way, but there's still 92 Knights coming out towards this from the south side. He's looking to try and take out the Bombards. The keep is going to go down. No protection left on the Sacred Sight. Matisse single-handedly almost takes oh. this out right now. And now the Knights come in from the backside. Hand Cannoneers in the blink of an eye obliterate two knights and say see you later don't even think about it dude, dude there's he, he can't fight this vortex has to back up give up the sacred site win condition the wonder got deleted which was great for him right but a new wonder could happen right yep yep definitely the call and, and look at mattis is buying stone right away we just saw him buy stone i i i saw him buy a hundred stone just then how much has he got in the base still got gold back here 
I don't see any on the minimap. I don't know about you, but I can't see any stone out here. Yeah, and honestly, that was a huge investment for Vortex. He had stockpiled all that stone so he could immediately build three or four keeps. It was a really well, it was a really good attempt, right? It was honestly insane. And now the sacred site is left abandoned. No one's really there. And now it's kind of up to uh, Divine. He's got, <laughs> he's got a big revolver and he can point it at either player. And he's choosing to point it at the ground, the pacifist route. Not gonna try and take these like killing blows. It seems odd to me, right? Like he's again, just giving Matisse the time to build a wonder. How, Although, much, how much do you think a hundred stone costs right now? What would be your guess? I think it's completely unreasonable to buy. 454 oh gold for 100 stone. I, I just checked the HRE. Vortex's market is 506 gold for 100 stone. Oh, is really? Is it different for the players? Is it different? Or, it different? or yeah. maybe we just looked at different times? No, no. I'm seeing 454 right now. Why does China have a better market right now? That's the... the that's the... The classic Silk Road discount. <laughs> That's a classic finding a bug <laughs> during a tournament game. All right. <laughs> that that is interesting. Oh, uh, what what's your uh, wood purchasing at? Uh, for HRE, it's twenty six, right? I'm at thirty. And then what's your food? Wh wh which market are you? Wait, 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 wait. Let me go to Fortix's point of view and then click on his market. Four ninety eight and twenty six, and then I go to. Divine's market, and it's 446 and 30. Yep. Different costs. Different I costs. Did not know that was a thing. <laughs> wow. Maybe, maybe something happened weird in the free for all format or something. Yeah, I, I didn't no think idea. that was a thing, but uh... maybe we shouldn't focus on this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll write up a ticket for it later. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll we'll cover this another time. Um, I mean, we could talk about that because there's currently very little action. I mean, the sacred site is now mostly meaningless um, so divine oh, divine's just going to clear out these keys and vortex isn't going to bother not going to waste resources trying to defend it it, it just doesn't make sense to at this point he, he's he isn't going to get a chance to go for sacred sites again and what is happening what is matisse doing i don't know what he's doing but look at the way that he's placing the production down on the shoreline he's up to 1600 stone at the moment so he's bringing in 120 every minute. So I mean, even Let's at the, even at this rate, he should be in, uh, have enough to throw down another wonder soon. I know we just said we should focus on it, but I want to find a market for Matisse. And click on it. I don't even see. Oh, there it is. Okay. For him, stone is even cheaper. <laughs> what? Hacks. Oh no, 438, 438. For some reason, the HRE market is just more expensive. Is, is, I... is Matty's throwing the game right now? Bausch ones are on the shoreline. They know they managed to get taken out, but the hand cannoneers are in hot pursuit right now. All of the units for Matty's turn around and say, all right, you want to fight? Let's fight. Let's do it right now. Bombard's going to be teeing off towards these units. The hand cannoneers are just blasting ass right now behind this. Look at the hand cannoneers just popping off, going absolutely ham along the shoreline, eating everything alive. Divine no. barely dropping a unit. Don't you say throwing? But like, look at his bank, look at his production. He doesn't care. Like, yeah, this is bad, but like it's so far away from his actual enemy that like it has very little impact on him. What's, what is interesting was I think that was another scouting mission. No, hear me out. I think he needed to know what the hell Divine was making. He hasn't seen Divine's army in a long time. Now he knows. I need bank announcements. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know how you you can't fight that army without bank announcements. You need yeah. you need 15 mangonels and then sprinkles to deal with the bombard so the bombards don't snipe your mangonels. I think that's legitimately the only way, unless you have an equal number of hand cannons, which are even going to be worse because the range is going to help so much for China here. So I I don't know how you beat this without mangonels. And now Matisse knows at least he has 27k wood. He could make that. But I think we're going to see. A wonder again eventually i don't know why matisse isn't trying again maybe it's just too expensive yeah I, th I think it might be the case i mean when you think about it right he's got to buy four thousand stone at this point and if you're paying 500 gold for every 100 stone you're talking about what is that twenty thousand gold that you're paying for that that's yeah. best case scenario or twenty five thousand gold 
Um, it doesn't be, leave you with a whole lot left. Yeah, I gotta be honest though. I really, I understand it to a degree, but I really don't like that Divine just left like wood on the map. Like, he deleted so many vills, I think just too early. Yeah, like, I agree, yeah. I think his position would be better if he had all this wood because he's playing it like he can't lose a unit, right? But like, he still has resources on the map. He, he could play it to lose units. Um, as the Bausch, or the Carrix come in. Oh man. Take a look at this attack that's now coming in on the south side. Vortex is pushing in with a huge amount of knights. Now, he's got to be careful not to go into the choke point right here. All of the hand cannons. Vortex is, is... Vortex is committing suicide with these knights right now. Look at the damage that's coming through. Vortex, you've got to be careful, and he pulls back the correct it's decision. Symmetry. Wow. Vortex calling it very close there. That was an absolute meat grinder. Were they trying to coordinate that? Was that a coordinated 2v1? Because they realized neither of them are going to win if this army stays on the map. It could because have been. Because this army is effectively unkillable, so I think they're going to have to work together to kill it. But, like, I don't even think they can 2v1 it unless they really change their setup. Like, neither of them has the army to fight, I think. They, ne they need mangonels. They need they need mangoes if they don't have it. There's there's no the real Chinese chance. Bombard. <sighs> but they have clockwork bombards defending them. So it's just like, you need a lot of mangonels. And wood is a problem. Long term. I mean, yeah. not for Matisse, obviously, but... Like, if you're Vortex, do you really want to risk, like, your last 6k wood? Like, there's still plenty of forest, but you just don't have the vills right now. Oh my gosh, Drongo. So many details. So many things to consider. <laughs> Matisse made a move, importantly. He has bought 2,000 stone. Yeah, he's up to 2,600 now. So, almost halfway there. And he's building up so a lot of carrots on the shoreline. This is actually quite a nice move from him. Because by yeah. him pushing back this attack on the shoreline, this actually opens up the option for him to move into in, into the wonder. Because by yeah. taking out the this shoreline, by keeping the Carracks here, he says, you're not going to be doing any drops. And the consequence of this yeah. map, of this spawn, of this layout, the linear design, it means we talked about this at the very first point in this game. You have to come from this corner and you have to clear out the entirety of the map. And then you make your way up towards this top side, and vice versa. It's a long walk. Now, interestingly, there's there's opportunity now for Matisse to build transports and do his own landing. But now Divine moves his knights forward. Or sorry, Vortex. Oh man, this there's so much you can say. The bombards are <laughs> just gonna rinse these Carracks. Oh my god. Carracks are coming in with some decent shots. Though. How much range do they got? They got ten tiles of range. So it's a, it's a pretty close call between the two, but I mean they can trade blows, but the, the like the bombards like three shot them I think, or two. It's a lot. It's yeah. a lot of damage. Yeah, two shot. <laughs> so so Div divine not giving careful. up on the water though. He's he's throwing down a little little bit of a, a a dock over on this west side. He's got five docks coming up on the the very far corner of the map. But vortex is going to be careful. Comes. Have a look at this. His bombards are getting left behind. Knights turn around. Looking to pick off units against Matthias. Now this is an army that, that Vortex can actually beat, I think. That's still a lot of aim cannons. Although English, without network of castles, here, going to be lacking their primary power. But, I mean, HRE Knights don't really have anything going for them here. So, depends on how much work these hand cannons can do in the back here. Yeah, I think that the lack of... The network of Citadels is really going to hurt him in this situation. And indeed, he gets forced back. Even with those strong Holy Roman Empire Knights. He's not able to do it. The Bombards are focusing the wrong target. Honestly, these Bombards should all be focusing the individual hand cannoneers. Yeah, I don't know what's going on here. He's just taking out these barracks. I think the attack move is letting him astray. Or he doesn't like the unit spawning behind him, maybe. That could be the maybe case. He was thinking he would, maybe he was thinking he would win this fight pretty handily, which it looks like he will do. Hand cannon numbers again, are still pretty solid, though. <laughs> Divine is repairing his Barbican with no wood income. So you can just see his wood count just slowly. <laughs> it's at minus one. Slowly. He has three villages, dude. Like... I, how is he going to ever play Navy again? Like, 
He's building up this big Balshwan mass, but he has very little gold. What's he gonna do with the Balshwans though? I mean, sure you get map control back on the water, but what are you gonna do with them? I, I think the problem is, if anyone makes another play for a win, they just lose. And Vortex just isn't getting enough gold from this trade. I, I think maybe he needs to train another 50 traders. Yeah, that, that would make a lot of sense. He's only sitting on 1,900 gold a minute at the moment, but the Bash ones are moving out. Keep in mind, they've got their uh, they've got their nest of the bees, bees in placement. But when are they going to fire it off? They have to attack move. This this is just them walking past, right? <laughs> he wasn't even looking. Um, yeah, that that's one that doesn't fire while it's moving. So you have to like stop to shoot. Oh, I think I see what's happening here. Is he just pushing right up towards the center and he's just going to drop and go straight for the king? That could be an option for him. There's a lot of keeps to go through. Is he going to try and open the wall for Vortex, maybe? I don't know if Vortex can go through, though. I feel like we're watching Lord yeah, of the Rings right now. Dude, yeah, Gondor is calling for aid. The beacons <laughs> are indeed lit. Uh, because this game is pretty freaking lit, Drongo, if you ask me. Uh, I, I can't believe this is happening. I mean, there's so many... There's been so many turns in this game. It's just, it's ludicrous. Uh, now, one thing to note, Core wasn't a successful investor when it came to his early decisions in this game. Hall? But if we do <laughs> click on the guild hall, you'll find that Core's investments are paying off. He's up to 27,000 gold at the moment in the guild hall. Keep it going, Core. One day you will retire. He's doing work here. He could soon have more gold than all the players in the game have combined. Just give him a couple more minutes. <laughs> he's, he's saving up. He's saving up for the next game. Oh, yeah. Next game, he's going to be loaded. But the Bauchwans have to run on the C. Bauchat or not, they aren't going to deal well with the demos, which are running them down. The but... nest of bees. Oh. Oh, it goes over the demo. The demo ducks underneath. I never knew that was an interaction with kill them. The Bauchats will go down with some time here. So manages to take out one of them though. So not not too bad, but uh, I suspect there's going to be a few more demo ships on the way for Matias here. Maybe maybe just a couple. Dude, that was half that was half of Divine's wood that he had stacked. He had six k wood. He's still repairing the Barbican, notably. So that wood count is still going down, and he's not going to be able to afford it. He's going to have to reboom bills at some point. Um, otherwise, he's just going to lose long term. Unless he builds a one here, but he doesn't have wood, so he's not going to do that. I'm a bit worried for Vortex at the moment. He doesn't have a big is he income. Going for the, the king is on the move. Oh, oh, where's the king? Oh my lord, where's the he king? He was in there. Did he move to the Elsbach, maybe? No. Wait. He's not in the Elsbach. I don't see the, the king. The king is with the traders. With the traders. With the traders. Going into a corner in the south. He'll be okay. All right. He'll be okay. Live long, king. Live long. And prosper. <laughs> Look at him go. He's a happy man. Made it through with a little bit under half health. So very well recognized by Matiz because that was a weak point. And look at Matiz now just destroying the trade line completely. Vortex is going to be in trouble here. With no gold, it means no knights. With no knights, it means no chance. But a very important thing just happened. Matiz, or Matiz, sorry, I don't know how you say it. He just stepped onto the sacred site, showed, showing the combat. And now Divine uses that information and immediately makes a move on the map. Yeah. This could be a problem for Matisse. He could get backstabbed here. You can see the numbers really starting to fall for Matisse, though. He's going to retreat away from this. Still sitting pretty happily on 100 or 280 population. Up to 1,800 stone. Still yet to make his way towards that 6k. Still, still sitting on 99,000 food as well. When it comes to reinforcements, this guy's got plenty. There's a cap to how much resources you can have. 100k. Yeah, you can't have more than 100k. Is it 100k? Yeah. Oh my gosh. 100k yeah, is max. Literally at the food cap. At this point, you consider deleting those, right? Like. Yes. At some point. Can we just say please? <laughs> no, I mean, it's working for him, so maybe he shouldn't change what he's doing. Look I, at, I think. Okay. How good is this push right now, though, from Matthews against Vortex? I think this might be it. Vortex, well, Vortex is struggling to put units on the map. He's got 22 spears, 10 knights, and 6 bombards. That's it. He's up against food. a hand cannon in maps like this. How do you deal with it? Vortex is legitimately out of food. It's like 27 food in the bank, 200 food in the bank. He does not have resources. This is it. 
if this army goes unopposed, he will die. But honestly, I think Divine is going to save Orcus here. There's no way. There's no way. I mean, what's no, the threat here? I mean, even if Divine manages to come over here and distract, surely Matiz says, actually, I, I know that, like, the, he, he keeps his eyes on the prize. I don't know, man. His, his production lines are long and could get cut off. And if, 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 if Matiz gets another kill, he would have a hundred more population than Divine. I think at that point, you just slapped on the wonder. And there's just nothing Divine would be able to do, right? Unless this army is really clutch, but... Wait, I think the army's coming to finish off Vortex potentially. I well. think so as well. I, I think he realizes, hey, there's a kill down here to be had. I'm not going to let Matiz have it. I'm going to get it myself. There's a king down here. Three siege workshops behind these stone walls. Mangonels. He wants Cold to go rooms. mass mangonels. Look at the resources as well. He can do it. He could make a bunch. And here's the army of, uh, the army of Divine is here. But it looks like uh, Divine's turned around, though. He's gone full Fire Lancers as well. Look at that. Mass Fire Lancers now coming out of the base of Divine. He's sieging down all of the production. Beast. Yeah. But I think... I think Vortex might be dead. I mean, worst case scenario, what happens? So the king will run out the back and do a loop-de-loop -loop and then come back into the keep. But then we'll probably die anyway. He's got the Elsbuck in the north for safety, but that doesn't feel safe given the position of this army. There's no units from Vortex. He's down to 80 population. Mass Knights wasn't the answer for him this game. And the gate getting knocked on. Ding dong, anyone home? The, the king on the run. Half HP. Escapes out the back. Popping out that movement speed. He manages to make it out safely for the moment and throws up another keep over on that west side. It'll keep him alive for a little bit longer, but there's always the risk of rogue fire lancers coming through when your king is not behind the stone walls. And look at this. Horseman on the move immediately. Matiz knows where that king is going. And remember, boiling oil will be through on this keep. He's got core architects in, which means a little bit of extra health, but no emergency repairs. And he throws down a town center immediately next to the, to the keep. He knows that emergency repairs here will be able to keep him alive a little bit longer. Interestingly, he is running closer to the base of Divine. Divine is now fully behind. Like, Divine's motion here has been weird, right? It's, it's, it's kind of like he actually was intending to save Vortex. It's, it, it's, it's very, very curious. Uh, I, I want to know whether he's used the treason ability recently. The king is still safe I, inside the keep, so I suspect not. I, I don't. I don't think he knows where the keep is, or where, where the king is rather. I don't think he's used it. He has this outpost to the left of it, so he does kind of see the shenanigans. And I think he could realize here if he saw that in the fog. But he is moving. He is moving to intercept. But I think it's going to be too late. This key. This king is going to go down. He's got emergency repairs. It keeps him alive a little bit longer. Divine might be able to find a way through here, but Bombards are making their way in as well. He's throwing down more battering rams. Four battering rams getting thrown down right now. Double Bombards going to start working down on that keep, but the Fire Lancers are here, and they spot the Bombards. The Bombards turn around and say, oh, I'm not equipped for this. Bombard one goes down, turns around, hits the keep. Fire Lancers come through, cracking, and the, the keep is about to go down, and Matiz assassinates Vortex. He gets the kill. The king popped out just before the keep went down. But it was that damn close for Divine, and now there are only two that remain. And the question's going to be, where does it go from here? Maybe M Matisse has 350 total pop choice now, right? And Divine has 200. So this battle will be won by Divine. But this is so close to his base, I don't think Matisse even cares about these units anymore. They did their job. Now, Matisse, fortify, wonder. Next play, buys the stone. Wonder's going to get placed in seconds. I, I got something a little bit better for you. Take a look at this. There's a guy standing on the sacred site. Right next to the pond. In the middle of the map. And his name is Monk. He's not the investigator you're familiar with. But he is... He's a, he's a very strong man of religion. And I suspect 
He may be making moves towards the south of the map shortly. Divine has cleaned up all of the production over here on this east side of the map. And it means the main attack point is a single avenue onto that sacred site. And we see the purchase now. The wonder gonna get placed. Boom, down it goes. And we should see that monk moving to the south now, already on the way, I think. He is. He's making yeah, moves. he's running along. He's got that theme song stuck in his head. Like it's a short, jungle out there. <laughs> like a short, bald man <laughs> running through New York City. It is a jungle out there. Look at him go. He might have... He might not have OCD, but he's certainly going to solve this case <laughs> of, of who gets the sacred site. Um, yeah, I think he's going to get the sacred site. He's killing all the forward buildings, and I think. So the tease is going to try and bunker down, but I think he miscalculated. I also honestly miscalculated. I did not. I kind of forgot again about the sacred sites. Thankfully, Divine is a much better player than me and immediately recognized that this was the next move. And he's going to do it in time, I think. You know, the crazy part for me, right, is Mantis has got that extra population space. But he's still got 117 villages. It means nothing. Divine has deleted all of his villages. He's got 11 economic units on the map. So essentially an army of 240 units. Compare that to Matthias. And he's sitting on 187. So sure, he's got more kills this game. But at the end of the day, if your villagers are still alive, then what's the use in having all that extra population? You know what? If, if Divine wins this because of sacred sites, you have to... You have to wonder if Matiz should have just kept his wonder up and tried to decap that sacred site on the coast. Because he decapped it almost by himself, right? Yes. Later. Yeah, yeah, it was it was like a, a a single attack came through on this choke point. Matiz almost took out Vortex by himself. I think had all of the knights been here, it would have been a different case. Right? Okay, interestingly, loads of Manganels now. Matiz has made this decision to invest in the Manganels. He's going to have to keep them far enough from the bombards, but if he gets close to the sand cannon mass and, you know, Divine doesn't perfectly pay attention, a lot of units could go down, like in this choke point. Sand cannon is. He's trying, to, he's trying to keep him alive. He's falling back. He's, he's really got to hightail it out of here. He's getting caught out of position. The Mangonels! The Mangonels! Oh my god, it was disgusting! It was absolutely disgusting. How many units just went down there? I think like 30? <laughs> it was a lot of units just died. That mass was 110. Wait, actually, no, way more. There were 110 hand cannons. Wow. And now there's 93. So, not too many. <laughs> but a decent chunk. A decent chunk for sure. Man. The healing there from... I got, I think I got so hyped that, that was... I, I literally pictured Randy Orton jumping off the top rope, the RKO coming through, and then it, it, it just... It missed. It just missed. Like, I... Yeah, I don't know. You, you actually clipped in Discord. I didn't hear you at all. I just I, I heard, actually like, clipped you got in, in my own. And they completely cut out. Uh, my my own mic cut it cut me out because I've I've got uh like it, it it plays it feeds back through the headset and I, I I couldn't hear myself. I'm like I went too big. Um, speaking of too big though, Sacred Sight in the center of the map has been neutralized by Matthias. Oh my god. Uh, a couple did, of horsemen just made their way through. Notice? Yeah, I think it was a, a case of that. Um, really interesting decision from Divine to actually push over here. I, I was going to address this a little bit earlier. To me, what makes the most sense is just kind of camping this central sacred site, maybe throwing a stone wall around this bottom sacred site, um, if, if possible. I mean, the landmark's here, so I don't think it's probably going to work. Wait, he has to pull his whole slow army back. Dude, he needs a monk ASAP. And... Dude, did you see this Matisse moving five horsemen to the left here? I think he's just going to try and prevent any monks from coming. Yeah. Is that, there the monk in the south still? That's a big Wait. play. And how much stone does Divine have? Divine's got 25 oh, stone. Matisse missed him. This monk, this monk is just needs to snake through. I don't know if this army can get... This army needs to get to the sacred site and protect this monk. And the game is still there for Divine. But if this monk dies, I don't think there's another one close enough. He does have the gold, but yes, it's 12 minutes to go. And uh, actually, I think the Carracks should be able to hit the Monk if he stands on the Sacred Site. These Carracks have got the an insane are, range. The Carracks are going to get just dumpstered by this army, though. Like, like the the Hand Cannons and Bombards will one-shot these Carracks. Um, 
the horsemen if, are too far away. I don't think they can contest Divine them Divine just needs to go. Divine needs to go fast. He's got two minutes left on the clock to make this play happen. The monk is there ready to go. The cape is and going up as well. And now here comes Matisse. Divine is taking too long. Matisse is sneaking around the coast through this little choke point. Divine needs to go. He, he's respecting way too much this army. He needs to go, go, go. Oh, disaster for Divine. I don't think the timing is there. Oh, the Bombards are all going to get eaten alive. Look at this. All the Bombards. Oh, no. They've been spotted out. The Spearmen now making their moves towards it. And every second that passes is a second closer to defeat for Divine. He needs to avoid... Oh, he needs to get the undercut. Where's the Monk? The Monk's still a little bit away from it. And now the Fire Lance... The Bingadils! Huge damage. Huge damage. Look at the Fire Lance is coming through. Where is the Monk? The Monk's still not yet on the Sacred Site. Now making his move in. The Carracks, they're looking for it. They're trying to find a way through. He's got 11 minutes left on this timer. He needs to undercut it. The Horsemen have made the it horsemen. in on the backside. They're going to be able to stall it out for a little bit longer. Him. The Monk, the Monk, the Monk. He's trying his best to stay alive a little bit longer. He manages to do it at the same time. A huge army, but the Mangonel shots are big. More and more Mangonels. Look at look at the Mangonels in there. He's got seven Mangos sitting inside that. The Monk on the sacred site. Baushwan's moving through. Demo ships exploded immediately. Carrick's trying to find a way to take out this Monk. It's so clutch right now. 10 minutes and 35 seconds. The sacred site is getting capped. I think he's gonna get it unless this Carrick shoots. If this Carrick shoots the Monk, he'll be okay, but the Carrick's have to run away from the hand cannons. They just can't fight hand cannons. The Siege all stuck up in this choke point. The Sacred Site, seconds away from getting capped with 10, 18 seconds on the clock. Eight. Divine <laughs> does it. He recaptures the Sacred Site, but notice there's the Sacred Site in the South completely exposed. Is this going to last? I honestly don't think so. I think it's way too easy to decap either one of these formatees. He's got a better army. Divine has very few resources. No gold, no stone, no wood. How is he going to defend this long term? The hand cannons aren't going to be enough. Oh my gosh, this is insane. But can he hold these few units remaining? The Vouch Chad's coming around. Oh my gosh, Drongo. It, to me, it all goes back to that one decision to push over on the east side. Up against that stone wall, there was no need. He captured all three sacred sites. He could have happily camped here for days, but instead he doesn't. And now he loses his entire army down to 110 units, and they're slowly but steadily rallying across the map. It's not going to matter, though. I think this sacred site is going to get taken here. A couple of men at arms still holding on. Yeah, no, yeah, no, I think it's down. <laughs> you said, wait, wait I was like, what have you got? Wait, but... He oh. delayed it. He delayed it. It's 10 seconds. Oh, 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 the, the timers are the same. Look, he's been standing on the, the sacred side. The oh, same. the timers are ahead now. <laughs> Matiz wins. There's no way Matiz loses the game. He delayed the timer. Oh, what a giga yeah, chat play. He, did it. he doesn't even lose the game. That's good like, game. That's it. Yeah, I think so. They're there's no chance. There's just no chance he's ever going to get to this wonder in the north. It is bunkered down, fortified. All these production buildings up here as well. You can see the stream of units slowly making their way across. Matisse still has 92 villagers. Good to lead at any time, but he kind of needs the golden cup. And the sacred site will be decapped. And good game will get called. Wow. What a game of Outback Octagon. I, I got to say right now, Winston, I think that's the best Octagon game I've ever seen. That had so many turns, so many twists. I never knew where it was going to go. I didn't know whether Walmart Viper was going to be able to make it through the early game. Unfortunately, they didn't. But in the end, it didn't matter because Matiz came out on top. What a game from Matiz. Dude. <laughs> Can we just say, dude? Let, let, let's, let's breathe that in for a second. <laughs> I need a couple deep breaths. Okay, everybody, everybody in out okay so what just happened um players died in the early game Casva got sniped budget my viper also got sniped so they both got sniped really really early giving kind of these corner players a lot of space vortex matisse and divine all had tons of space then sassy and core huge scuffle in the middle over the gold Oh, yeah, remember uh, Sass had his his king over on the right, and he was running around, and then, <laughs> and then there were a bunch of players fighting over it. Then Core eventually goes down. Blade gets sniped by Divine. Man, what a crazy game. And then this incredibly long standoff. Th this standoff took like an hour or longer to resolve, um, where three players just staring at each other. And honestly, I think it kind of comes down to that choice by Divine to delete all the eco and just sit on 200 units for an hour. An 
hour of resources collected. Let's check that graph, man. You look at the resources difference. Yeah. Divine's just dwarfed by his opponents here in terms of what he could have collected if he had kept his economy alive. You have to question that a little bit. Um, but Matisse, keeping the eco alive, able to sustain that late game and snipe that sacred site. Oh my gosh, what a game. An incredible game. An absolutely insane game right there. Well, fellas, if you're watching this on YouTube, I hope you've enjoyed this game of Outback Octagon. And of course, we'll catch you guys in the next one. Make sure you check out all of the game, all the players for this game. I'll leave links in the description to where you can watch them live over on Twitch. And if you're interested in checking out some content from Winston, he's an incredible caster. I'll leave a link in the description to him as well. Thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you guys in the next one.